Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Star Trek The Original Series. Today we're going to do Season 2, Episode 6, which is called The Doomsday Machine. I hope you guys are excited. Let's dig into it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the comments. The distress call definitely came from one of the solar systems in this sector, Captain. Sensors show this entire solar system has been destroyed. Entire solar system? Have it on the sensors, Captain. By configuration, a starship stopped in space. She appears to be drifting. No answer, Captain. All I get is the automatic beacon. Where is Uhura? She must be off duty. Kind of looks like our starship. It's the constellation. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. You know what's an upsetting thought? Eventually, I'm going to watch every episode of Star Trek the original series and it won't be my first time watching any of them anymore. I won't have any more to watch for the first time. That makes me really sad to think about. The entire bridge is damaged and uninhabitable. The rest of the ship seems able to sustain life. So there could be survivors. Oh, very likely that there, there are survivors. But if the bridge was completely destroyed and uninhabitable, then the captain is quite possibly, and his best lieutenants are quite possibly, uh, all dead. Yeah, looking pretty rough in here. The whole communication system looks to be shorted out too, sir. Gotta check the phaser bank, see if they've been fired. Bones, you come with me. No clutter, no half-empty cups of coffee. Whatever happened didn't happen without a warning. The crew wasn't abducted, they just left. Is it possible they were beamed down to one of the two planets? Improbable, Captain. We'll continue our search, Kirk Allen. Hmm. Well, I was hoping we would find somebody here. We still might. I can't imagine a man like Matt Decker abandoning ship while his life support systems are still operative. Computer system is still intact. We can play back the duplicate captain's log from the auxiliary control room. Oh, there we go. This should be interesting if there's anything there. Oh, there is somebody and he's breathing. Matt. Jim Kirk. It's Jim Kirk. What happened to your ship, Matt? A ship attacked that, that thing. What thing? What was it? Answer me. He's in distress. What happened, Matt? Jim. <laughs> Give him a minute. He's in a state of shock. Yeah. I mean, I know time is of the essence, but that's not going to help. 2.1 exceptionally heavy subspace interference still prevents our contacting Starfleet to inform them of the destroyed solar systems we have encountered. Oh. Systems? We tried to contact Starfleet. We couldn't run. So the your crew. solar systems. Oh, I, I had to beam them down. I stayed behind. Last man aboard the ship. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? Oh, poor guy. What attacked you? Right out of hell, I saw it. Where's your crew? On the third planet. There is no third planet. Oh. There was, but not anymore. Oh my God. They called me, they begged me for help. 400 of them. I, I couldn't. <laughs> Captain, Washburn has a report. Hmm. <clears throat> His acting was so good right there. I'm I'm almost crying with him. Somehow the antimatter in the warp drive pods has been deactivated. But what sort of a thing could do all that? If you'd seen it, you'd know the whole thing's a weapon. It must be. What does it look like? Yeah, well, is it a creature? Is it a miles long ship with a, with a maw that could swallow a dozen starships? What about the constellations tapes? She was attacked by what appears to be essentially. A robot. An automated weapon of immense size and power. Its apparent function is to smash planets to rubble and then digest the debris for fuel. Who created it? What is the projected course of this thing? It will go through the most densely populated section of our galaxy. Oh. How do you fight something like that? An alien race, apparently from another galaxy. But why? You ever hear of a doomsday machine? No, I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. It's a weapon. 
built primarily as a bluff. It's never meant to be used. So strong, it could destroy both sides of the war. Hmm. Never heard that term, Doomsday but term machine. Term before. Somebody used in a war uncounted years ago. What are you going to do about now, it? Take it easy. First thing we're going to do is get you back to the Enterprise. Oh, no. I stay here. We'll take her in tow. I'll stay on board and get her ready. It's just that I, I, I never lost a command before. Well, there's nothing left to command. Poor guy, though. Beam Dr. McCoy and Commodore Decker on board immediately. Hmm. I can only try to imagine how it must feel for him as the captain of the starship to um, have 400 crew crying and asking, pleading for them to, for him to help them and being unable to do anything. All these people that are your responsibility and then they just get destroyed. Whoa. It's like a whale shark. Pursuing us. She's the constellation looks smaller than the Enterprise, or is that just the perspective? What are the chances of deactivating? I would say none, Captain. I also believe the nature of this machine precludes the possibility of easy access to its control mechanisms. So this thing has been around for a long time. Transporter room, stand by to beam landing party aboard. Jeez. I don't think anyone's beaming aboard now. Base of action, Mr. Sulu. I see. Damage report, all stations. Mr. Spock, the transport is out. Effect repairs. Spock. Spock, come in, Spock. I just love it every time they something life-threatening happens. They're all flying all over the place. They just got hit by something, and then they just get back up. Whoever's in charge starts telling everybody what to do, and everybody just kind of calmly does what they need to do. No casualties, Mr. Spock. Impulse and warp engines operative. Transporter and communications under repair. Okay, so Random it's... Random chance seems to have operated in our favor. Plain non-Vulcan English, we've been lucky. I believe I said that, Doctor. <laughs> yeah, in so many words. It's veering off. Back on course for the next solar system. So we can outrun it, but how do we stop it? You can't let that thing reach Rigel. Why, millions of innocent people would die. We are only one ship. Logically, our primary duty is to survive in order to warn Starfleet Command. Our primary duty is to maintain life and the safety of Federation planets. What do you propose we do? Get this guy to sickbay. Put him to sleep. You will lay in an evasive course back to the Constellation. Belay that last order, Helmsman. What? We're going to attack. Who is this guy? I mean, I know who he is, but like... You will carry out my last order, Mr. Sula. Surely we don't listen to him. He outranks Spock, though, right? But he's not... I am officially notifying you that I am exercising my option under regulations as a Starfleet Commodore and that I am assuming command of the Enterprise. You have the right to do so, but I would advise against it. He can do that. You tried to destroy it once before, Commodore. The result was a wrecked ship and a dead crew. This time I'm going to hit it with full phasers at point-blank range. Sensors show the object's hull is solid neutronium. A single ship cannot combat it. You have been relieved of command. Are you going to get another 400 people killed on your conscience? I mean, I, I know that there are more people on the Rigel colonies that he would like to save, but... You can't let him do this, Mark. Doctor, you are out of line. So are you, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> Paragraph 1A clearly states... To blazes with regulations, you can't let him take command when you know he's wrong. If you can certify Commodore Decker medically or psychologically unfit for command, I can relieve him under Section C. Yes. I'll certify that right now. We'll also be asked to produce your medical records to prove it. Get him to the examination room. <laughs> what about the captain? We can't leave. Doctor, you may leave the bridge. I was so feeling Spock. sorry for this guy. Do something. <laughs> Do something. 
Mr. Spock knows his duty under regulations, Doctor. Do you? What is wrong with him? <sighs> really, no. I felt sorry for him. I was almost crying with this guy. Now I hate him. Hard about Helmsman. I don't care what kind of rank you have. You're out of line. Ready on main phaser banks. Aye, aye, sir. You know, when I was talking about how they're so calm and following the orders and the training that they were given, maybe in this instance, I take it back. Like, can we get a little rowdy right now? Can we <laughs> throw this guy out of the bridge? Well, thankfully, I have a feeling that Scotty and Kirk will be able to pull off some miracle and get this thing to be able to go somewhere. The impulse engine's control circuits are fused solid. What about the warp drive control circuits? All right, we can cross-connect the controls, but it'll make the ship almost impossible for one man to handle. Oh, worry about right. Your miracle, Scotty. I'll worry about mine. Get to work. Aye, sir. <laughs> so this guy lost command, and he was really upset about that. And that was, like, the foreshadowing or, like, the hint that he was going to take command here. We must retreat, Commodore. The energy drain... I'm in command here, Mr. Spock. Get us in closer. At least try to comb around from behind. Well, I mean, they have to go right through the mouth, huh? Because they can't really damage the outer shell. Just leave! Controls are all hooked up, sir. We should have some power for you soon. The tone's going on. <laughs> you turn the... Switch to a different station. You don't want to see this. Spock already said that that's not going to do anything. It's near Tonium or whatever. Just don't stop. Commodore, I urgently recommend immediate withdrawal. Yeah? Recommendation noted. Maintain course. Fire! Ugh. Jeez. Enterprise, come in. Mr. Spock, come in. So he out outranks even Kirk, right? Commodore? Scotty, push it right to the edge. This ship has got to maneuver. Aye, sir. Come on, Scotty. I know you can do it. Jeez. Sir, deflector shields are gone. No. Severe casualties reported on decks three and four. This is your fault. We're being pulled inside, Commodore. Inside? But don't you understand? We've got to destroy it. It is suicide. That's what, yeah, he, he wants to kamikaze. If you don't veer off, I shall relieve you on that basis. Veer off. We haven't got it. We're being pulled inside. Oh, great. So we don't veer off, but he's still in charge. Where's possible outcome? Man, that thing looks so cool. I love the design. Scotty, give me that power. You've got it, Captain. Just enough to move us. I can do better. That'll do. Captain, I still don't know what we're doing. We're moving. The Enterprise isn't. Maybe that thing will see us. Let the Enterprise go. Oh. Phasers, you've got them. Oh. Yeah. Just earned your pay for the week. <laughs> I think he he earns it no matter what. Fire phasers. We're loose, Commodore. Between the two of us, we'll kill that thing. That's not. It's closing fast on the constellation. Kirk pulled us out of there by distracting it. Now it's our turn. Fire phasers. No, that's not what Kirk wants to do. You're not even doing anything. If somebody punches this guy in the face and knocks him out, I will be so happy. We can maintain this speed for only seven hours before we exhaust our fuel, but it can refuel itself indefinitely. Then we'll have to fight it now before it gets any stronger. No. Can you raise Starfleet? No, sir, but I've got ship to ship communications back. Picking up Captain Kirk. Oh, thank God. What's going on? Give me Mr. Spock. I'm in command here, Jim. Since your first officer was reluctant to take aggressive action against the... I mean, you're the lunatic who's responsible for almost destroying my ship? You are speaking to a senior officer, Kirk. Don't give a shit. If you have anything to say at all, you will say it to me. There's only one thing I want to say to you, Commodore. Get my ship out of there. He couldn't save his ship, and he's preventing Kirk from saving his ship. It's gaining on us, sir. Take evasive action, Mr. Sulu. We are going to turn and attack. Not with my ship, you don't. 
You can't relieve me, and you know it. According to regulations... Blast regulations. Mr. Spark, I order you to assume command... This is why Kirk is the best. You are relieved of command. I don't recognize your authority to relieve me. I do not wish to place you under arrest. You're bluffing. Vulcans never bluff. No. No, I don't suppose that they do. The bridge is yours. Oh, thank God. Can you leave? Commodore, I believe you are scheduled for medical examination. Commodore? Bye! Later! Captain, we are taking an evasive course back to you. Fine, just make sure you stay ahead of it. Now, is he gonna cooperate or... <laughs> no, he's not. We should have punched him first, I told you! Oh, he's strong. Oh, man. I thought we were rid of this guy. I thought he wasn't gonna cause any more problems. The best I can give you on impulse is one third power. Keep it going, Scotty, keep it going. Mr. Spock, we'll rendezvous with you at 14, 13.7 hours. Well, if he didn't have Scotty to do his miracle workings, then Kirk would be in big trouble. Someone's opening the shuttlecraft bay doors. Oh. What is he going to do in that shuttle? He's going back to his ship? Commodore, I must insist that you return to the ship. I'm going to take this thing right down its throat. Is that even going to do anything? Matt, you'll be killed. I think he's well aware. The commander is responsible for the lives of his crew. I should have died with mine. You cannot succeed, Commodore. Your only logical alternative is to return to the ship. I don't think this guy cares about logic one bit. You can't throw your life away like this. We need you. Your experience, your judgment. His Fast. judgment? It's not We're great right now. We're stronger with you than without you. I think he's made up his mind. And I don't think he could turn back now even if he wanted to. This is dark. He's gone. And he destroyed one of our shuttlecrafts in the process. May I offer my condolences on the death of your friend? It's regrettable that he died for nothing. Jeez. Sensors indicate a minute drop in the machine's power emanations. Do you think the shuttlecraft explosion might have done some damage? Drop in power is definite, Captain. But negligible. Transporter operational, Captain. Shall we beam you aboard? Negative. Mr. Scott and I will stay here. Spock, listen. Maybe Matt Decker didn't die for nothing. He had the right idea, but not enough power to do it. If a starship impulse engine is overloaded, will it be powerful enough to destroy that thing out there? From inside it, will it be enough? Insufficient data. So if he could, the constellation into there, cause an explosion, and then they can beam him out of there at the last second. Rig a 30 second delay detonation device and rig it so that it can be blown from up here. Right away. You're getting dangerously close to the planet killer. I'm gonna ram her right down that thing's throat. You'll be killed. No, no, I don't intend to die, Mr. Spark. Your chances of survival are not promising. The transporter is not working at 100% efficiency. A chance I'll have to take, Kirk out. A cranky transporter's a mighty finicky piece of machinery to be gambling your life on, sir. What about the detonator? Press this one, 30 seconds later, poof. Oof. Once it's activated, there's no way to stop it. Prepare to beam Scotty on board. Good luck, Captain. Thank you. Oh, I, I was gonna say, <laughs> Scotty uh, has to risk his life too, but no, only one person needs to... Oh, see? It's not... What's the matter with that thing? <laughs> what have you guys been doing up here? It's the main junction circuitry. I'll get it. Go, Scotty, go! Transporter is out, Captain. You'll have to stand by. I can't. Power level's dropping too fast. He'd better hurry. The speed is of the essence. This is a really intense episode. I, this is really good stuff. Bridge, transporter operational. But this jury rigging won't last for long. He's got to come off now. What if it attacks? 
attacks. Why isn't it attacking? Be me aboard. Energize. Energize. Oh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> Gentlemen, be me aboard. We can't, Captain. Transporter is out again. 20 seconds to detonation. Mr. Scott. Ah, uh, it's getting worse. Try inverse phasing. This is the longest 30 seconds of my life. 13. Gentlemen, I suggest you beam me aboard. 9. Mr. Scott. <laughs> 6. Try now, Mr. Kyle. Nothing's happening! Oh. oh! Bridge! We got him through! That's crazy! Energy output zero. Whew! We can all, everyone, you guys can breathe now. <laughs> we can breathe now. Welcome aboard, Captain. It's quite dead. Yes! Ugh. Well, Matt, you gave us life in an attempt to save others. I presume your log will show that Commodore Decker died in the line of duty. Indeed it shall, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Way back in the 20th century, the H-bomb was the ultimate weapon, their doomsday machine. And we used something like it to destroy another doomsday machine. However, I can't help wondering if there are any more of those weapons wandering around the universe. Well, I certainly hope not. That would be bad. I found one quite sufficient. Awesome. All righty. There were a lot of highlights to this episode. I was very impressed. I really liked um, the actor who played Commodore Decker did a fantastic job. I think the writers also did a really good job making him somebody that you sympathize with and really feel for to somebody who you just really despise. But I don't want to be too harsh on the character because we could see that he was in, like, when we found him, he was in complete shock. He was not in a very good mental state and... I think it's safe to assume that he would not have acted the way he did if all those crazy traumatic things hadn't just happened to him. Losing his crew, losing his ship, losing his command, feeling so helpless, wanting to regain some of that control that makes him feel safe. He was desperate, he was panicking, he wasn't thinking straight. This is the first time that we've ever met this character and the last <laughs> but um you know he was kirk's friend before then kirk respected him i think we can assume that he was really acting out of character of what he normally would be in this instance it brings to my mind the term cost sunk fallacy so so many things were lost to this doomsday machine he lost his crew you know he lost his ship he didn't want that to be for nothing. He didn't want it to be in vain. So he was unable to pull away because if he pulls away, then all of that would have been for nothing. I'm not really sure how applicable that is here, but that's kind of like what came to my mind. He was just desperately, desperately trying to gain something out of all of these losses. So that's one thing that I really liked. The first thing that I really liked about this episode Second thing would be when Kirk finally got able to contact the Enterprise and previously everybody was like, well, you know, we have to listen to him. He's got rank. He's technically he can take over command. We can't really go against him, uh, even though, you know, nobody was on board with what he was telling them to do. They had to just follow orders in their mind. And then Kirk comes and he's like, Get my ship out of there, you numbskull, you blundering idiot. <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to you. Go climb a tree, you know, all this good stuff. Kirk does have the tendency of letting his emotions kind of supersede 
what the rules and regulations are. We've seen it time and time again. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy about his character. He's true to himself and what he believes in. And while probably 99% of the time he will follow orders and go by the books, his personal beliefs on what is right and what is wrong and what needs to be done at the moment to achieve the best outcome, he will let that be more important than what Starfleet Command says that he has to do in some book that he read in school. And third, I bet you guys can guess it. It should come as no surprise. Scotty. <laughs> I am loving Scotty more and more that I see him just be his Scotty self. He does his job. He's damn good at his job. Nobody else can even compare to his skills as an engineer. He'll say it like it is. If he doesn't agree with you, he will say, hey, I don't know about this. But then at, in the end of the day, he will listen to Kirk, what Kirk says. And he just always has such a good attitude about everything, even under the most dire circumstances. He says, hey, Captain, I've given her all she's got. I can't give her anymore. <laughs> and Kirk will say, well, you better figure it out and make it work. And he says, all right, Captain, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> so lastly, the episode as a whole was really awesome. I loved the look and the design of this doomsday machine. It was utterly horrific, just this lifeless, unfeeling void of destruction going through, taking out entire galaxies. And I don't want to go too deep into this, but I know some of you guys watch me from my gaming content. Some of you guys play games. Um, this thing reminded me of the Reapers from Mass Effect also. So I thought that was really cool. I really enjoyed the episode because I kept thinking back to that and some of the similarities between the Reapers and uh, this uh, Doomsday Machine in this episode. If you know, you know. And I think that about wraps up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Whichever one that's going to be. I don't know, but I'm excited for it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And I'll see you guys. Bye!